Turkey's President Recep Erdogan says the famed Hagia Sophia will open for Muslim prayers on Friday, July 24th, right after he approved turning the UN World Heritage Site into a mosque. The move is another sign of Erdogan's determination to expand his influence in the Muslim world. Some fear it also raises the threat to Israel, the Middle East, and even NATO. Moments after President Erdogan's controversial decision, the Muslim call to prayer sounded from Hagia Sophia. Erdogan made his decision despite objections from the U.S., Russia, U.N., and the Russian and Greek Orthodox churches. Hagia Sophia was once the seat of the Eastern Orthodox Church. The reaction of the Orthodox community was ignored. For the Orthodox Church, Hagia Sophia is as important as St. Peter's Basilica in Rome for Catholics. The church was built in the 6th century and was devoted to Christ, the Savior. For us, it has been and will always remain the church devoted to Christ. Once the largest church in Christendom, the Hagia Sophia is a coveted symbol. It was first converted into a mosque well over 500 years ago during the Islamic Ottoman Empire then turned into a museum by Kemal Ataturk, the founder of modern-day Turkey. The 1934 decision to turn Hagia Sophia into a museum was a way of signaling that Turkey was moving from the Ottoman era of sectarianism and hierarchies to a secular republic of equal citizens. And now with this move, Erdogan is once again asserting Islamist supremacism and domination on Turkey's ethnic and religious minorities. But Erdogan's vision has always been more ambitious than controlling his country. In a Facebook post, he said, the revival of the Hagia Sophia is a sign towards the return of freedom to the Al-Aqsa Mosque here in Jerusalem. In the Arabic Facebook post, he also said the resurrection of Hagia Sophia is a greeting from our heart to all cities from Bukhara to Andalusia. Andalusia is modern-day Spain and Bukhara is in modern-day Uzbekistan. Both are references to the Islamic dream of reclaiming lands once under the rule of Islam. And it all begins with Turkey. This is just one among many steps he has taken and will continue to take to socially engineer Turkey into a majoritarian, authoritarian, and sectarian regime. And this will have consequences, repercussions beyond Turkey. In the Middle East, there are many other supremacists, other sectarian state and non-state actors who would like to impose their will on ethnic and religious minorities. So I would expect other forced conversions of religious minority heritage sites in the Middle East and beyond. It's also a red flag to Turkey's Christians. This, of course, is going to be disastrous for Turkey's dwindling Christian population. Overall, there seems to be an intimidation campaign to either scare away Turkey's Christians on the one hand and to reimpose a sectarian Sunni Muslim dominant ideology on them.